Hello and welcome to my presentation about the experience of relational depth in remote and in-person therapy along with mindfulness. Uh, I'm Lily Davis. So here's a little overview about what we'll cover today in the presentation. Um, and yeah, covering all this and there'll be a take home message at the end. Um, first, here's a little bit about me. So I graduated here at Bangor two years ago um, and currently I'm coming towards the end of my Masters in Counselling. Um, before this, I have worked in the mental health sector before applying for this course and um, it sparked an interest in wanting to actually pursue counselling as my career. Um, and in terms of the research, it came about because I had some worries about starting the placement and I was feeling a bit worried about potentially having remote sessions with clients um, and worried that it wouldn't be the same as practicing in person. However, through experience, it has um, resonated with some of the findings which you'll see later. So we'll just go through some definitions first. Um, so relational depth can be described as when a counsellor and client are completely real with one another, with feelings of connections and rawness. And then Merz and Cooper have described relational depth as a profound and intense experience. And as the um, other bit of the research covers mindfulness, here are some mindfulness definitions as well. Um, so mindfulness is a state of interpersonal attunement where the individual experiences self-kindness in order to have the same attunement towards others. Mindfulness can also be a state of mind where one is fully aware of their thoughts feelings, sensations and surroundings, with curiosity and acceptance. So some background. The therapeutic relationship is at the core of person-centred therapy, um, which is why having a good sense of relational depth can be really important for the therapeutic relationship. Um, and Rogers says therapeutic presence is the foundation for relational depth. Online therapy has faced criticism in the past, causing a reluctance in delivering online counselling pre-COVID-19. And the disinhibition effect also contributes to online therapy um, with its criticism. And for those that may not for those who may have not heard of the disinhibition effect, it can be described as being more open and being more comfortable in due to the online or remote um, therapy taking place. And that can allow a client to perhaps overshare um, because of their comfortableness and feeling more like they are able to share because of this. And that can create um, maybe a sense of um, relational depth that might not actually be there. And with the background of mindfulness, it can really be seen as the enhancement for counselling skills. And counsellors who practice mindfulness are more present in the moment, increasing their empathy, which is also one of the core conditions. And they also may embody qualities similar to relational depth. So why research the topic? While the COVID-19 pandemic created a shift in the way that counselling can be delivered and it can create an area of exploration of experiences of relational depth in remote counselling compared to in-person counselling. And do you think that relational depth can be experienced remotely? And the purpose of the research will help counsellors understand what, what they might need to do to experience frequent relational depth with their clients. And is this something you experience working with clients? 
So our hypothesis, the first hypothesis is that relational depth will be experienced more frequently in in-person short-term therapy than in remote short-term therapy. And the second hypothesis is that relational depth will be experienced more frequently if the counsellor practices mindfulness. So on to our methods. There was 88 participants, 50 of which were counsellors and 38 were clients. Um, and all, all participants were 18 plus. Um, participants were recruited through social media, placement providers and the BACP research board. Um, with clients, there were 50, 35 females, two males and one prefer not to say, with the age being between 20 and 62 and the average age being 40. And clients needed to be either currently in therapy or have been in, in the last two years. And for counsellors, there was 48 male, female and two male between 22 and 65 with an age, uh, average age of 42. And counsellors needed to be either qualified or in a counselling course with a placement. And continuing with the method, so the first independent variable is the mode of therapy, which has three levels, in-person, remote and mixed, and it is between subject. The second independent variable is level of formal mindfulness practice, which also has three levels, which are high, medium and low. And the dependent variable to control all this is the relational depth. And the design was independent measures design with the separate groups of both clients and counsellors for each level of independent variable. Um, the measures taking place for the research was the questionnaire, which was the relational depth frequency score. Um, and here we have an example of the questionnaire and the what is included in the relational depth frequency score. And this is what was used for the clients and for the counsel for the counsellors as well. Um, this is an example of the five facet mindfulness questionnaire, which was a questionnaire used for the counsellor group only, as we were only measuring the mindfulness practice for the counsellors. And so this is the example of the questionnaire we use for them. And so we come to the results. So here we can see the table for the client results, which shows that the highest score for the relational depth was in remote counselling. However, there's not much of a difference between the remote and in-person, which shows that due to there not being much difference there, that relational depth can be experienced in all, in all modes of therapy. Um, and the one way in over revealed that there were no signif statistically significant difference for mode of therapy and relational depth. Um, and for those who have not done an ANOVA before, it's to have a significant finding, the score must be 0.05 or below, and here it is 0.911, which means it is not significant. And for the counsellor results, there was a two-way ANOVA, and it revealed that there was a significant interaction between the effects of mindfulness and mode of therapy. Um, as I explained earlier, it is under 0 0.05 um, and there was no significant difference in relational depth and mode of therapy. However, there was a significant difference in, rela in relational depth and mindfulness. Therefore, the first hypothesis can be rejected and the second hypothesis can be accepted. Um, and here we see 
there is a graph, the interaction graph for the ANOVA. Um, and we can see in this interaction graph that the to have the most frequent relational depth it is important to practice mindfulness at a high level um, if you're doing in-person therapy. However, if you're doing remote therapy, to have the highest level of relational depth, it is important to practice mindfulness at a medium level. So what does this mean? Well, it means that practicing mindfulness as a counsellor can improve the frequency of relational depth in both in-person and remote settings. However, it is the amount of mindfulness practice that is key to achieve the most relational depth. Um, so for clients, findings show that there is no preference for therapy being delivered in person or remote. And findings are similar to the previous literature in terms of clients and counsellors experiencing relational depth differently. However, the disinhibition effect may influence relational depth experiences in remote therapy and the core conditions could be seen as why relational depth is being experienced, um, especially for the counsellors as it is important to have the core conditions as a counsellor. So the limitations and potential future research. A limitation to the re research is that there are only two males for both clients and counsellor participants, making it difficult to generalise. Um, and results could be affected could be affected by this, as we may not know if gender has an influence on relational depth. So potential future research may include a qualitative element for the clients to be able to express what relational depth means to them and what helps them be able to experience relational depth in sessions. And then for counsellors to then have a deeper awareness of what actually helps clients feel connected and how what they might find useful in therapy and f a way for them to actually be able to connect with their counsellor um, and I also think that it is really important for research to include more clients as this is I think it is important for clients to be involved in research because it is our clients who we want to help so a take-home message so as clients shown a preference in the delivery of therapy, it shows that relational depth is experienced in either setting. Um, and as mindfulness can enhance relational depth, the high level of mindfulness is best suited for in-person counselling, with a medium level of mindfulness best suited for remote counselling. Therefore, it is up to you which way you would like to practice. Thank you.